today I'm going to upgrade my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack with my active heating and cooling system. What's up everybody? My name is Dan. Welcome to Freely Roaming. So if you've been following my channel, you know that I've been building my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack. In the last video, I showed you my active cooling and heating system that I'm gonna be installing into my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I take my battery apart and the different configurations I'm gonna to use to fit all that component, all those new components inside the pack without making the box bigger and also trying to set it up so it makes sense where all the components are being used efficiently. The first thing we'll do is we'll take the battery out and we'll take it apart down to its basic components. Okay, so I got the battery taken out of the van now. As you can see, here's the battery. If you saw my build video, you'll know that uh, this is more or less how it was when I finished building it. But I'll give you guys some uh, update on changes, small changes that I've made. I made this bracket. I just bent a, uh, an L bracket to a Z bracket to hold this cell balancer in place. This has got double-sided tape in the back so it won't slip up and down. And my concern was if the double-sided tape, which is VHB by 3M, very strong, it's not supposed to fail. But in case it failed, I didn't want it to fall forward into the battery because they're, uh, they're battery posts right here. So I made this L bracket, screwed it down to the wood so it's not going anywhere. But this battery, over two months, it's been working really, really well. And the cell balancer, it's also working really well. Right now it's at four millivolt uh, max min delta. So that's really close. And we're also only at about 75% charge right now. So I took it out of the van. I gotta take all of these parts that I showed you in the previous video that's got to get installed into this battery. So in order for this to work, there needs to be some new configuration, new setup. So I'm going to take everything apart, take all the stuff out, and then I'm going to figure out exactly how it's going to go back in. Most likely, I'm going to have to take out a lot of this uh, foam that I put in here to kind of take up the space because without taking that stuff out, couple things will happen. There won't be enough room to put things like this fan and uh, you know these uh, temperature sensors and also with all this foam there won't be room for this air to circulate when I install the fan in here. So there's going to be some pretty significant reconfiguration going on in here. Well, I'm going to get to it. So I've got it taken apart. Here's all the cells. They look basically the same with a little bit of dust on top. There's no visible swelling of any kind. I did unwrap all the cap on tape that I had used to wrap them together. So that's kind of a waste of cap on tape, but you know what? This rebuilding happens. So this is the basic components. If you saw my build video, you'll know that these are the four cells and these are the bus bars, BMS, and essentially the entire wiring harness that does everything. Temperature sensor, these are a couple of the, the uh, plugs that go into, one of them is the BMS and the other one is the battery cell level balancer or the monitor so senses the voltage of each cell on the outside in the display so I can see what's going on um, in the Victron smart shunt. Now the question is how do I put this thing back together and incorporate all these parts that are over here? So 
Oh yeah, and also, as you guys seen before, this is my cell balancer, active cell balancer. Now it's gonna be reinstalled somehow as well. So now I'm gonna take the box, put all the stuff aside. I'm gonna try to figure out how all this temperature control stuff goes in while still having plenty of room, plenty of space for this stuff to go back in. Okay, so I wanna show you guys what I've done so far. As always, these things take way more time than you think it's actually going to. So this box now is empty. And as you can tell, I've cut some holes in here. One in the back that's going to fit my fan. Originally, I was gonna just fit it here and just have a bunch of holes drilled in the wood so I wouldn't have this protruding uh, or actually nested into this uh, board here because then I have to get a screen for the other side which I don't have. Now I have to go find one. But I ended up realizing that this box is not quite big enough for this to sit completely inside the box. So I cut a hole for that. I cut three holes in the front that looks like a face. This one on the bottom is gonna take this air intake cover. So when this is all closed up, I'm gonna put a top on it. And when this fan kicks on, air is only gonna go through here. I mean, it's not gonna be completely water or airtight, so there will be some other air coming through here, but this will be the main air intake. So air will come in through here and then be exhausted back out there. Whenever that fan kicks on, which isn't gonna be for really any amount of time, um, except for when we're in really hot weather. And these two holes, as you can see, are cut for my temperature controller. So there's these two little flanges here with a hole that goes right in there, and I'll just screw it in from the back so it doesn't take up any space inside. I'll have access to it from the outside. So that's gonna be pretty handy. Two of them, one for the heater and one for the fan. And then, you know, all my controls will be out here. My capacity controller is already mounted out here where I can access. And then I'll have these temperature controls. And then when it's all closed up, it'll still look like a face. It'll look like that, kind of a robot face. And then when this is all configured, I've made, I've decided to reconfigure the batteries a little bit. The batteries are now going to be captured in this contraption, which is two boards, big washers, uh, lock washers and nuts, and a threaded rod that's covered in electrical tape, because behind this blue sort of film is the uh, aluminum enclosure for these batteries. I've not tested them yet, but uh, presumably, and I've heard from various sources that the aluminum enclosure is, uh, is part of the negative terminal. So you don't want these shorting out, which is why I also have these polypropylene boards now between all the cells. They're more rigid. They're just kind of thin cutting boards, cutting board material that you can buy for really cheap. So I got three of those, I cut them to size. Now they go in between here. Okay, so the sun is gonna set soon, but I wanna show you guys how the rest of this will kind of go together. I'll probably finish this tomorrow. I've got these silicone trivets that I got from Ikea that we've been using in the van a long time ago. I'm going to use them in here and just buy new ones for the van. So I'm going to line these on the bottom. And I will put some 
double-sided tape underneath to make sure they stay in place. So this is going to help do a couple of things. One is going to dampen the battery a little bit from micro vibrations from when we're driving. And second, these heating pads are going to go right on top, which means they will insulate the heat from going to the bottom. And then once I lay all these heating pads down, wherever they go, something like that. Now we'll also fasten them down. This one already has double sided sticky on one side. And then this piece of aluminum will go right on top. And then I will use Kapton tape to tape the top of this aluminum so that it's electrically insulated from the bottom of the battery just in case if you know one of the blue wrapping material wears through for whatever reason that uh, doesn't short out with each other so that's what's going to happen and I've got a lot of assembly to do still you can see I got a lot of stuff laid out here but I got these mounted these are in here so I just got to figure this out and then once all this stuff is in here this battery cage will go in and once the battery cage goes in the battery will go in with it and then all the other stuff will go back together the way they're supposed to all right, so I got this thing roughly wired in. As you can tell, I got these trivets down below, double-sided tape down. The heaters are under this aluminum plate. The top of this plate is covered with some Kapton tape, heat resistant. And then I just taped the edge with electrical tape. So, uh, you know, to protect it from abrasion a little bit. And then, I've got all the wires. Here's the uh, temperature sensors out here. I've got the wiring sort of mocked up right now. This one is going to the fan in the back. The heaters are connected to this one, which actually is set up for uh, 25 to 40. Oh yeah, that's right. This one is set up for cooling. This one is the, uh, I swapped this one out. This is the new one. These two have a much closer calibration. They're off by a less than one degree, so I'm just going to go with that. So I'm going to set this one to cool. Let's see. Right now it's about five degrees. So this to come on at, how about, if I go below five, it won't come on. Come on at six, just for now. As you can tell, it's pretty cold. It's five degrees C right now. And for it to turn off at eight. So it's actually on right now, as you can see. The light on the upper right is on. So let's have it turn off at, let's just say nine. So it's on, it's been heating, four and a half degrees. This plate's pretty warm. I think it works pretty good. This whole plate, it's actually pretty warm evenly. So if I stick these temperature sensors on that plate, you will see this temperature go right up. Now the heater's off. Take it back out. Earlier, when this was on, is drawing about 65 watts. So this needs to be set up for heating, but I will just sort of simulate. I just want to make sure the wiring works. There it goes. Fan just turned on. And it's blowing the right direction. Perfect. Once I get this top covered, air should be sucking in through here. And then going all around the battery and then exhausting out the back. Okay, so I just got this fan zip tied in there, drill some holes 
on the corners. I should be okay for now. And then I'm gonna put this temperature sensor right there. I'm gonna put some Kapton tape over it so it's making good contact. And then the heater sensor is gonna be on this side. It's the next day. Last night, I had this thing assembled, and I actually ran into a small problem, which I'll explain to you guys in a little bit. But this is working now. Totally put back together. Just as you saw, these are the boards that are held together with threaded rods. There are four stainless threaded rods. You can see one of them right there. One below, and there's a two on each side and that's holding the battery together and the battery has polyethylene boards in between to keep them electrically insulated in case the uh, the shielding the plastic sheath wears through for some reason it's probably not likely but I did it anyways it also helps to apply even pressure against the uh, batteries and wired it back together the same way this is the active cell balancer and then this is a uh, cell negative first cell positive second cell positive third cell positive and main positive so this is wired to that with these five wires and uh, so is the BMS the BMS has been relocated down here and then this is the balance wires that go down to the other end of the BMS that's uh, plugged in that lets the BMS measure individual cell voltage as well as passive cell balancing and then I have the Victron smart shunt right there where the BMS battery min negative goes here and then load negative goes to the battery minus on the Victron smart shunt and then this is the main negative for the whole system. So this shunt's measuring everything. This little wire you see going to the load minus. This is going down to the Victron battery sense. The battery sensor. Now it's attached directly to the side of this cell. Near the bottom of the cell. Right against the case. So when the battery heats or cools, it'll be able to sense it. And then there's also a sensor. A... Uh, temperature sensor right next to it and another temperature sensor down here that's connected to these temperature controllers one of these controllers this one controls the battery heater and this one controls the fan so based on whatever setting I have set up for this either the heater on the bottom of the case will go on or the fan will kick on and down there on the very bottom beneath these batteries, I have the aluminum plate, a real thin sheet of aluminum actually, with Kapton tape on top. And then right underneath are my 60 watt silicone heating pads. And underneath the heating pads are silicone mats that insulate the uh, heat from the heating pad from going below. So it can only go up. And that should heat this pretty well I tested it last night it actually works really well last night we were down to about five degrees Celsius which which is about 41 degrees Fahrenheit here and I had this kick on at five and was able to heat it up to eight uh, it took maybe 20 minutes or so maybe a little bit more but it worked you know that's the way it's designed to do if you want it to heat faster you have to put more heating pads in there if you put my heating pads in there, you're going to run more power. So right now it drains about 65 watts when the heating pads are on. And does about 3 to 5 watts when the fan is on. Actually, it's this one. And I'm going to put a cover on this. I'm going to find a piece of board and then uh, cover the top up. It does a couple of things. It helps keep the heat in. 
and it also uh, prevents any of these terminals from getting shorted out. As you can tell, I've uh, repositioned my cell balancer as well from if you saw my original build video. This cell balancer has VHP tape in the back, but I also installed this bracket to hold it in place. So the VHP keeps it from going side to side up and down. And in the case that the VHP fails for any reason, this bracket will keep it from falling down onto the terminals. And then there's also capped on tape wrapped around it. So here's the uh, power. Here's the power cable for running the heater and the fan. As you can tell, it's not directly wired to the system, to the battery itself. It's going to be power through the main bus bars of my electrical system, which will essentially connect to the uh, main positive and main negative. It's important to do that for a couple of reasons. One is that if you wire it directly to the terminal posts of the battery, you're not going to be able to stop this from draining the battery if the BMS senses low or high voltage, right? Because essentially you're bypassing the BMS, so you don't want to do that. So you definitely want it to be outside of the BMS. The only thing that the BMS negative is connected to is the BMS sensing wires and the main battery negative terminal of the, of the BMS itself, nothing else. So if this BMS cuts off, nothing will be connected to it. And the other reason why you want this to be outside is you want whatever draw you have on this heating system to be measured by your shunt. So if I had it connected directly, not only could it damage the battery when it draws too, too low, it will also, you won't be able to know how much is drawing. Or really, if you don't look at the, if you don't have visibility, all the time to the outside, you can't tell if it's drawing any wattage. Now, by doing it this way, plugging it outside of the battery system, everything will be measured through the uh, through the shunt. You could, if you wanted to wire directly, you could wire this so that positive goes here and negative goes here, which is exactly what the battery sense is doing. I chose to not do that because I actually have a second shunt in my van that I also use, which is, it's a shunt that I had previously. I just didn't install or didn't uninstall it. So I have two shunts and running the two shunts in series is, uh, is totally fine. So I have a way to be able to see my battery drain and data log through the, through the Victron smart shunt. I can also vis visually see my, uh, Ailey shunt through the, the small monitor that it has. I mean, you can easily have both of these features if you just buy the, um, I think it's the BMB 712 by Victron. It essentially has this and a, and a uh, monitor. But this is how I got mine set up. Preliminary test shows that it works pretty good. I'm gonna get it installed back in the van for the next video. In the next video, I'm going to, uh, we have a couple of cold days coming up. So I'm going to get this all wired up in the van and see how it works. So there you go. That is part two of my active heating and cooling system upgrade for my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack. In the next video, I will show you how it works inside the system. We'll do some tests. I don't know if we're going to get cold enough temperatures for it to actually drop down below freezing, but I can customize the temperature settings of my heating and cooling system so that it works at any temperature. Even though it doesn't go below freezing, I can just raise the preset, which is the beauty about this system is that it's totally customizable and it's very inexpensive. I do want to mention one little trouble that I had when I was putting the battery back together. It took me about two days to do this project. The first day when I took it all apart, figure out exactly where things are going to go back in, and when I put it back together, I noticed that the battery wasn't turning on. When I did the voltage measuring from the battery posts themselves, the battery cells seemed fine. So I narrowed it down to the BMS not turning on for some reason. Generally, when the BMS is not working, it's because it's found a fault, whether it's under voltage or over voltage of one of the cells. I couldn't figure out what was happening until I took it all back apart again the next morning 
And what I realized is that I have three of these plugs that have the sensing wires. One of them goes to my cell balance checker and the other one goes into the BMS. And a third spare one that I was going to use for some other kind of sensor that I haven't set up yet. What I didn't realize is that the two extra ones that I added is wired in the opposite direction as the sensing wires that came with the BMS. When I looked at the wiring after I unplugged it, I realized that is what is causing the BMS to trip and not connect the power through the BMS into the system. But when I found out that was the cause and I swapped out the plug for the original plug that came with the BMS, it worked perfectly fine. Because this Dolly BMS does not have a smart monitoring feature, I cannot see what it's actually doing. It only tells you if the BMS has turned itself off or if it's back on in operational mode. By plugging the wrong voltage sensing plug into the port, what it told me is that the BMS works because the BMS was sensing some anomaly with the voltage of the cells when the wires are plugged in there backwards. It didn't damage the BMS at all. And I'm happy to tell you that it's now working 100% inside the band. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for the next one where I'll show you exactly how the system works. Thank you guys so much for being subscribers, for watching my videos. It really means a lot to me, it really helps the channel to grow. Special thanks to all of you that support us on Patreon, it means a lot. It really helps us produce more videos just like this one. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.